beautiful gospel, and then St. John the Baptist at the heart of it. And at the end of it, he said, he sent my angel before you. And so we angels, of course, are spiritual creatures. Uh, but the word angel, angelus, if you look up the dictionary, it means, it means messenger of God. You know, so, and, and, and he has John's specific mission, of course, to prepare the way for Jesus for, the, for this coming. And that specific mission, especially that was a baptism of repentance. So the soul then seeing itself in need of a Savior, saying, I cannot be righteous on my own, but I need God's grace. I need help from above to save me. And this is, you see how critical this is. And that's sort of John, the, the baptism of John the Baptist didn't actually take away sin, only insofar as it prefigured Jesus' baptism. The blood of Christ takes away our sin. But the disposition, the baptism of repentance, the disposition is absolutely essential. And so the ones who rejected the baptism of John then were very, very slow to accept our Lord Jesus. And so when the, some of the Pharisees and the scribes came to John to be baptized, what did he say? He said, who told, who told you to come here, you brood of vipers? <laughs> Show works of penance. <laughs> right. And, and so then St. John the Apostle, was a Baptist, who was an apostle of St. John the Baptist first, he made a big deal about uh, the ones who, uh, you know, condemned Jesus and grew because they what? They, because they did not accept the baptism of John. And you get the other part where, where our Lord, they're trying to trick Jesus, a trick question for Jesus, which is from <laughs> trying to trick truth himself ain't going to work too well, you know. But they said, you know, uh, uh, what well, was a trick question? I forgot, I forgot the exact one. But anyway, then he, he said, I, I will tell you, yeah, what does authority? Uh, what gives you authority to do this or whatever? And John said, I'd ask you that question if, if you ask me this. Where does baptism in John come from, from God or from man? Because they're not going to say from God. They don't really believe it. And then, so John then, he, and he was prepared for his mission, especially because... Of course, he was baptized in the womb. And so he, when he was six months, <laughs> when he was three months pre-old, how's that for a good answer? He was three months pre-old in the womb. <laughs> he was six months in the womb. Then Mother Mary comes in with Jesus. And of course, this is what St. Louis de Montfort describes as a, a first uh, miracle of our Lord. Uh, uh, and, and, and when, so Our Lady speaks. And when Our Lady speaks, Jesus baptizes John. And so he jumps out of joy. So you get this little six-month-old fetus, pre three, three months pre-born, who already experienced this great joy in being cleansed of original sin. You know, and, and already the graces start happening, because when that happens, then the St. Elizabeth already immediately enlightened of the mysteries, and she says the second line to Hail Mary for us, Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed are the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. <laughs> it's pretty cool. And then, so after that, well, John's going to be a different person, won't he? Because he, nothing else, so he sees that he's different. Everything takes a whole new light for him. And so he, what he experiences is he's got to bring other people to, to, to accept so he went through the baptism. He went through this purification. And now he knows that it's not just for him. He's been purified to bring other people to this purification. And they have to be, they have to be ordered to receiving this purification, and hence the baptism of repentance. And that was his job. And you can see why he's not going to be clothed in the soft garments in the palaces, because that's way, way beneath him at this point. And, 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 so, and, and so his mission, just like Our Lady, you know, we got the Immaculate Conception coming up in a few days. She had to be conceived with original sin because it was necessary for her to have that disposition to be able to fulfill her vocation. And so for John's vocation to, uh, to bring people to accept the Messiah, to recognize, so this was his 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 preparation you know and then uh, and then so part of his mission was to bring people to baptism of repentance but the other part then was to finally point him out after you know when he when he finally came 
And here you have one of the great lines of Scripture, because John says, you know, I, I, he knew Jesus, but he said, I didn't, but I didn't recognize him. It wasn't, it wasn't me pointing him out. It wasn't my knowledge. It was God's knowledge. God gave the insight because the Father makes the voice of my beloved Son, the Holy Spirit descends visibly over the head of Jesus. And that's how he's pointed out. Pretty fantastic. Okay, and then so John's perfectly faithful. And what's his reward for that? Being in the dungeon of Herod. <laughs> you can say he's been in the dungeon of Herod because in an in a, in a, in a, in a allegorical, figurative manner, because he wouldn't give Holy Communion to poor abortion politicians. <laughs> That's another way to say it. <laughs> he just defined for us the, the role of the great bishop. In, in a sense, you say every faithful Christian to follow the conscience, you know. And so then, then, then he, all of a sudden you get the surprising statement, are you the one, since his disciples, are you the one to come or should we look for another? Wow. What a contradiction in term. You figure his home mission was to receive, was to point out Jesus, which he did. It was all beyond his doing. It was all grace. And then as he's rotting in prison, he then uh, sends this message out. Yeah, I remember reading somewhere, some people would speculate, well, he did he do it for his disciples, or he did it because well, he wanted it for himself, or whatever. And I would say he did it for himself. Because remember, Jesus bringing in the kingdom of God. And, 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 and he's been completely faithful in that. And, and so where does it bring him in reference towards his kingdom? It goes to the whole thing of what the Lord said at the, when he's before Pilate. My kingdom was of this world. My ministers would be fighting for me, but it's not of this world. Or what he said at the Agni the Garden before that, don't you know I can send 12,000, 12 legions of angels immediately to my defense? And so you could say John was rewarded with a big share in the passion of Jesus. And this is going to be for every, every one of us, every follower of Christ is, is going to be immersed in this mystery. You know, there's a way, in other words, you're doing everything right, you're being faithful, and, and for most of us, we can't be, actually say we're doing everything right. <laughs> Part of our growing humility is we can be doing maybe things 95% right, and then 5% we're messing up in something or other, and then we get squashed like a bug in some way. So that 5% mess up helps us keep, keep us humble, <laughs> but, 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 but don't, just because the sufferings and the crosses are there, it's, 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 not, a, it's not a sign that you're not doing, that you're not on the right track and being faithful. But you can, you can really see the, the, the greatness of the soul then, and it all boils down to that faith and believing. And believing in Jesus, and it's got to be concretized with trust at those times. You know, and, and, and then, and so then our Lord, when he gives this response, he doesn't just go and say a direct answer, like a, make something nice and simple in a way, because our Lord always deals with mysteries. And he's communicating divine things to us human beings with words that our little puny intellects can take in with, the, with his grace, of course. You know, and so our Lord just, he just, he just enumerates some of the deeds being done, like all the remedies for original sin, all the gifts, all the graces being poured on the little children of God who want to receive them. And then finally says, and blessed are those who are not scandalized by me. Who, who, for, blessed are those who form, whom our Lord Jesus Christ, what he says, what he does, and everything, who he is, is not a stumbling block. You know. Yeah, and, and, and you know, you can see that that stumbling block reaches this perfection in a way when our Lord is hanging on the cross. And, and then you can look at the words of the, uh, <laughs> the good thief who was so blessed to receive the graces. Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. 
who was given that specific grace and did not stumble at the sufferings of Jesus. And see, at the root of all this whole thing is we see the incredible, which no mind can even, we can't even come up with a concept to see how great it really is. We have to be in heaven and see God face to face for it. But the incredible humility, the condescension of he who is God, becoming like us in all things but sin, and then, and then taking on this, this position of a servant where he's effectively becoming the suffering servant, way beyond our imagining, to win a salvation. And while we, meanwhile, wounded by original sin, got this intrinsic selfishness, and, and you know, which, and, and when we put ourselves before God because our love is selfish and we love ourselves too much in the wrong way, and, and, want to be, and then want to fill up ourselves with our greatness and stuff, the opposite of, of what our Lord does. And we can just see it's beautiful that his condescension, his humility, his emptying of himself is, is the source of our graces for us to be made pure and made holy and conform to him. You know, and so in this, we can see why then in, in the work of salvation for believers in, he sticks to his plan, we still have to die, uh, but we're living to him, and he's living, he's living in us, and then we're being conformed to him. So he's not walking the face of the earth, but you and I are walking the face of the earth. And so part of that then is to embrace the cross and our little position of life, and Jesus living in us and through us. And just like Jesus and all of his suffering, winning graces for souls, we're doing the same thing. You know, and 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 uh, you can see then at the at the. At the, uh, uh, the, for the final coming, uh, the preparation is not John the Baptist, it's divine mercy. So we know, we're, we know we're pretty close to the end in the sense that divine mercy has now been given to us in uh, preparation for the final coming. And, 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 and again, at the heart of this divine mercy is what? Is, is not to be scandalized by our Lord's forgiveness. You know, not to be scandalized how much he will suffer to, and, and give us grace is just to do everything he can to just squeak out a, a little bit of trust from somebody to put their trust in him and be forgiven. You know, and we see it all working out many ways in our times. You know, are there any, any issues in the church? <laughs> you know, ever, ever think of our Lord's Blessed are those who are scandalized by our Lord's great condescension and holy communion. You know, in the, in the way our Lord is treated in the Holy Eucharist. But it's really unbelievable. And blessed are those who uh, will be in the, remain in the Catholic Church and go forward and go on and being faithful, but no matter what. You know, so it's a it's a beautiful uh, gospel for us too. You know, John the Baptist. In the next line, it says, and "Of those born of woman, there's not a greater than John the Baptist." But that he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Kind of like I think Our Lady or or. <laughs> Baby Jesus, maybe both, told St. Faustina, true greatness consists in loving God and humility. You know, and it's uh, important to say for the beginning, for the preparation for Christmas. When our Lord comes the first time as a little baby, comes in human weakness, comes to us, not it's going to come into final coming, but with completely approachable. And, and he's just coming to receive our, our love you know, and we want to be with Mother Mary in that quietness of heart and have that contemplation, that reflection, this great time of grace. Prepare to receive Jesus. And then once Christmas starts coming, then we have a, a new type of grace that with the poppy spirit to be enhanced in, in adoring him. And come, let's adore him. And as you and I are to follow the example of St. John the Baptist, who is that great disciple of Jesus, you know, who, who said, he must increase, I must decrease. 
And of course, the perfect disciple of Jesus is, of course, Our Lady, Mother Mary, who is also a model of faith. They received Jesus the first time. And, and, and we live in this great Marian time, because when Jesus comes the final time, you know, the, the, the battle array of Christians under Our Lady's mantle will be in full strength. The Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.